All right, guys, this K Tony 4 swap is gone. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Well, I pulled the K24 out of here so I could show you guys everything we did in order to get it in here. But now I'm left with this beautiful empty engine bay. One of my favorite things to see when I'm working at Hasport, what to put in it. Huh. Well, I have three motors. We're gonna try them all in right now. And you can tell me what we're gonna put in here next. Let's check them out. These are our choices. We have right here, L15B7, it's the new SI motor. This thing makes 250 foot pounds at just a couple thousand RPM. This thing is a torque monster. It should really move our eighth gen Civic quickly. And then over here, I have the J series. This is something I've been wanting to put in one of these cars for a long time. I think it'll fit. This particular one is actually a built motor. Uh, it was a race motor for a Honda Accord. It is a 3.5 liter build, and uh, I'm thinking maybe this might be the choice of the car. And then we have this one right here. This is the K20C out of the Civic Type R. Actually, this particular one's an Accord model, come to think of it. This is the K20C4 out of the 2018 Accord Sport. So uh, this thing, everybody knows, is just a smoking hot motor. Uh, but right now, we're gonna try each one of them in the car and see which one gives us enough room that we can play with. And if they all fit, I'm gonna leave it up to you which engine we put in. Wants to steer itself. Up first is the L15V7. Let's get this car up in the air, slide the motor in place. Looks pretty good. I mean, this engine is probably width-wise very similar to the K series. So obviously it's gonna, obviously we put this in EKs and EGs, DC2, so we know it's gonna fit. The question is, what's the turbo clearance look like? It fits in pretty good. I mean, I think that this front end, I don't know if it's, we don't have the cowl in here right now but I can move it forward another three inches. So it's not a question of whether or not it fits. It's more a question of exactly where it's gonna sit. Uh, I probably need to do some measurements on the subframe, make sure I'm not interfering with that. This is a little bit bulkier than a K, but uh, no surprise here. I knew it was gonna fit. With all the room I have, it actually makes me really hopeful for the, for the K20C. This is definitely, uh, a choice for this car. Uh, mounts are going to have to be made for this motor. Another option other than the K. Yeah, I mean, looking at the way the mounts sit, I'm looking at the bolt holes on each side and where I would ma make the mounts. And uh, this is going to be pretty easy to do. The only tricky mount is going to be the rear subframe mount because it attaches the, to the oil pan. Now the Accord motor has a mount that goes to the oil pan. So when I make the mounts for this, I'll probably go get a L15BE, which is the Accord motor. That has the mount on the back side of the oil pan, and those engines are super available, and they make more horsepower than the SI motor. This is an SI motor, by the way. So uh, I think I'll have to start looking for an Accord motor. Next motor. This is a J-Series motor. The external dimensions on all the J-Series are almost identical. The only real difference is this piece right here is slightly longer on the ridge line, probably on the pilots as well. That's for a bigger engine bay. Uh, those of course come with automatic transmission, not uh, manual transmission. Uh, this is a manual transmission uh, complete with LSD. Uh, I've always wanted to put one of these in one of these cars. I think it'd be a pretty cool swap. So let's get it in position and drop her down. Okay, it hit. Oh, hit the manifold, that's why. I wasn't looking at that. So that didn't count. 
I'll have to strategically reroute this harness. So alternator is hitting our condenser fan a little bit. Uh, we'll just switch to a thinner condenser fan. That'll fix that problem. You can see it making contact right down here. With that fix, this engine would be able to come forward another inch and that would make it a really nice fit. I'm gonna actually lift this up in the air and pull this condenser fan and then we'll put it back down again and see, see how it fits. I think a thinner fan definitely seems like there's plenty of room for everything now. Let's see what our ground clearance looks like. Well, it has stock-like ground clearance. I assume the hood will close. Yeah, it's not going to be an issue at all. This is the highest point. Cool. I like the J. I mean, I think it fits in here nicely. I mean, luckily the J is not, it's no wider than the L15 is. It's actually looks like the same width as the L15. Maybe, maybe half inch to three quarters inch narrower. Uh, now that doesn't bode well for the K because I think the K is a wider motor. Uh, but uh, looks like we've got lots of room to the diff. Let's see here. Right now the diff comes right back to here. So we might have to switch over to EPS. But uh, other than that, looks pretty good. I think it's gonna interfere with the hydraulic lines. But again, there's an electronic power steering rack comes on the uh, SI. So we'll probably just have to switch over to that. And I think I have one in my hoard. All right, K20C time. So this thing's got really good ground clearance. The engine is no wider than, well, maybe that much wider than L15. Seems like there's barely enough room for the turbo, but the turbo goes on. Yeah, we've got pretty close clearance. There's a solenoid here that might have to do something with that little corner. But all in all, I think this might actually fit slightly better than the J. So, uh, Good ground clearance, um, interesting. Let's take it out and uh, talk about all three engines. Let's talk about what I think I learned. So the K20C fit, I think, surprisingly well. Uh, I'm still leaning towards this engine though, and let me tell you why. If you were to buy a uh, California Missions engine, the proper six-speed transmission and a coupe ECU, I believe you could actually make a carb legal or 50 state legal J-swapped eighth gen Civic. And I think that might be really, really cool. And that would just run like a stock Accord, except it'd be much lighter and obviously much faster. So I'm kind of leaning towards this engine right here. The L15, it looks like an easy swap. I mean, I'm gonna have to make mounts for this because I think that this, this engine swap is going to be the swap of the future. The K20C, you know what's interesting? This might be a really cool swap for an SI. And honestly, if I make mounts for the EX, then it's really easy for me to make mounts for the SI because I know where all the mounting points are, just a matter of adjusting a few things and I can make a kit easily for this engine if I make it for the EX as well. So I am wondering what you guys think. What engine swap do you think might be the best one for this particular car? Again, I'm leaning towards the J because I think I could relatively easily make a carb legal one that worked just fine. Obviously sometime in the future, people are gonna figure out how to get these things and get them in and make them uh, emissions legal, uh, and as well as this one right here. So, uh, you know, they're all on the list to make mounts for. Uh, I've got a car here, needs an engine. What do you think I should do? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of VTech Academy. I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Uh, please, think about liking and subscribing. Uh, we are gonna do more things with this car, and I actually bought a four-door version as well. 
Uh, so who knows, maybe two swaps. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining me and we'll catch you next time.